Hello, I'm Damian Katz, the Director of Library Technology at Villanova University's Falvey Memorial Library, and also one of the primary investigators on some recent dime novel related grant projects. Uh, I'm here today to talk about those projects and some of the online resources that they have produced. In 2016, Northern Illinois University and Villanova University were awarded a hidden collections grant by the Council on Library and Information Resources for the Johansson Project. The two principal goals of this project were to digitize the entirety of both institutions' Beadle and Adams holdings, the bulk of which is found in NIU's approximately 6,500 volume Johansson collection, and to publish the comprehensive bibliographic details from Albert Johansson's three volume House of Beadle and Adams online as open linked data. Uh, this was meant to be completed just in time to mark the 70th anniversary of the book's publication. In addition, we have also worked on developing teaching materials like lesson plans, which are the focus of this symposium. The dime novels digitized during the course of the grant have been made available on Nickels and Dimes, a website that features dime novels digitized from NIU's collections, as well as backup copies of selected titles from Villanova's repository. These dime novels are being incorporated into the teaching curriculum at NIU, where they are currently being used in several classes and are also the subject of faculty and student research. The project has the secondary goal of preserving what is, frankly, an important and endangered part of American history and culture. NIU's dime novel collections are among their most used and handled, but also their most fragile. Digitization ensures the existence of a digital surrogate, even if something should happen to the physical materials themselves. Making them available online means that anyone with an internet connection can visit our collections. This work addresses the first challenge Matt discussed earlier, democratizing scholarship in much the same way that dime novels themselves democratized reading. The website currently contains over 8,000 individual volumes with over 250,000 pages, and we're adding more dime novels every month as digitization progresses. And unlike most dime novel collections, which are only described by an inventory of issues for each series, every volume at NIU is fully and lovingly cataloged. This includes full subject analysis for each book, identifying things like genre, characters, geographic locations, and topics, as well as extensive name authority work to unpack the hundreds of pseudonyms that are used. Patrons are able to interact with this data using the browsable facets or by searching. We extract the text from each volume by means of optical character recognition, so each novel is also full text searchable. If you search within a book, the terms will be highlighted on the page. The quality of this OCR varies significantly from volume to volume, depending on factors like the condition of the item and the size and type of font used. Accuracy is usually around 70%, which is often good enough for keyword searching. We also provide access to all of this text for the purposes of text mining. Each novel can be previewed in a book viewer or the entire volume can be downloaded as a PDF. While this presentation has focused on nickels and dimes, since it serves as the closest thing to a one-stop shop you can find for the publications of Beadle and Adams, it is not the only online dime novel collection available, and it cannot be reasonably expected to contain the entirety of online dime novels. Villanova's digital library contains a dime novel collection with more than 4,500 additional story paper and dime novel issues. Additional significant collections exist at other institutions, including Bowling Green State University, Stanford University, and the University of South Florida. Some institutions, such as Oberlin College, deposit digitized dime novels directly into the Internet Archive, and scattered titles can also be found in larger repositories like Hathi Trust and Google Books. Because digitized dime novels exist in so many different places, and because of their nature, the books can be difficult to organize and navigate. There's a need for a single source of information to help scholars find available titles, learn about those which have not yet been digitized, and explore the complex relationships discussed earlier. All of these needs are met by the Edward T. LeBlanc Memorial Dime Novel Bibliography, commonly referred to simply as dimenovels.org. While still a work in progress, its goal is to provide online entries for every series, issue, publisher, and author, unpacking the complex relationships that exist between dime novels, story papers, and related works. 
Named for dime novel collector and scholar Edward T. LeBlanc, and with a large portion of its data derived from LeBlanc's unpublished bibliographic work, this site has been hosted at Villanova University since 2012, and its content has been developed through the collaboration of many people at many institutions. NIU has been one of the longest serving and most deeply involved partners, first joining forces with Villanova during the very early days of the Nichols and Dimes project. The Johansson grant has strengthened both the NIU Villanova partnership and the tools used for managing the bibliography. The grant's secondary goal of adding all of the data from Johansson's bibliography to dimenovels.org is very nearly complete. The loading of Johansson's data into dimenovels.org was done through a combination of automatic and manual methods. Much of the data was loaded by downloading NIU catalog records into the dimenovels.org database using a process that automated matching of stories on the basis of similarity. All of the automatically loaded data was checked against Johansson's bibliography, and data about volumes missing from NIU's and Villanova's collections was hand-entered by data entry staff. Having data entry staff also enabled us to go one step further than Johansson by also indexing the entire contents of each story paper and weekly. This included creating entries for every serialized story, short story, poem, and article. In doing so, users are able to see every version of a novel, no matter how much it might have changed between editions, and for the first time ever, thousands of previously unknown minor works are discoverable. As alluded to earlier, the bibliography also links out to full-text copies of the works wherever they might exist, not just in the collections of NIU and Villanova, but also in other places like the Internet Archive, Hathi Trust, and so forth. Having a comprehensive database of full-text copies makes it easier to prioritize future digitization work. The DimeNovels.org system makes it possible to harvest the content of the bibliography as linked data, which makes it possible to reuse it in other contexts. For example, Nichols and Dimes leverages DimeNovels.org linked data to allow users to browse related editions of any story directly in the digital collection itself. This is intended to make it easier for patrons to compare editions so they can draw conclusions about how a story may have evolved over time. Effectively, this eliminates one of the major barriers to scholarship by making these relationships explicit and not obscured by the many different print bibliographies that would otherwise need to be carefully and independently consulted. We hope to also add a feature someday that will allow for side-by-side -side comparison of editions. While we've received a warm response to this work from the community of scholars and collectors, the uninitiated are sometimes daunted by the sheer volume of materials available. New researchers and students are faced with series that contain thousands of issues, many of them deliberately branded to look as similar to one another as possible. One of the most common complaints we encounter is from patrons who don't know where to start, which is especially troublesome because we can't continue digitizing dime novels if we can't establish that they're being used by faculty and students. The project is entirely grant funded and the cost of maintenance is borne by NIU, which has many other priorities. So we've begun to make more of an effort to develop resources for teachers and students. This began last year with the development of spotlights, which are brief lesson plans featuring a particular novel. The novels we've done so far are either of historical or scholarly significance, like the abolition romance Malm Guinea, or stories we feel have not received enough attention, like the lesbian pirate novel Captain Volcano. We're currently working with faculty, graduate students, and scholars to develop more of these spotlights in the hopes of combining two or more into larger units on race, sexuality, or politics for undergraduate or high school classes. As digitization on the Johansson project wound down, we also set our sights on the next phase of digitization. We successfully submitted a proposal to the NEH to digitize the dime novels and story papers of Street and Smith. As the last major dime novel publisher, this would effectively bookend the dime novel era, setting us up to digitize the Monroes and Towsey next. But unlike the Johansson project, which involves digitizing a very comprehensive collection located in one place, this project involves a larger partnership with many more institutions. The first phase of the project includes the Stanford University, Bowling Green University, and Oberlin College Libraries, in addition to NIU and Villanova. Work has already begun, 
and Street and Smith dime novels are already beginning to appear in partner repositories and linked from dimenovels.org. By the time phase one of the project is completed, more than 4,000 new dime novel and story paper issues, adding up to over 100,000 pages, will be freely available online. We've already talked about a great deal, but there's always more to explore. Uh, this slide provides some useful links to online dime novel collections and the bibliography. Uh, you might also be interested in following us on social media for announcements of newly digitized titles and other information. And of course, I've also provided my email address because I'm always happy to answer questions or otherwise discuss this topic. Thank you for your time.